One of the biggest sneaker legacies are the Air Max series. When looking at these shoes today they may come off as ordinary but back when they released they were astonishing. Sporting the most revolutionary technology at that time, the Air Max tech is likely the reason why Nike became as big as they are today. And thanks to our lord and savior Tinker Hatfield, the Air Maxes did it with style. While Tinker left the Air Max program in 1994, that did not mean that the Air Max train was going to stop anytime soon. This is the history of the Air Max 95. As I mentioned, in 1994, Tinker Hatfield, the father of the Air Max, had left that division to go and work on other Nike projects, and it was up to a young designer by the name of Sergio Lozano to not only be a part of the team that was going to create the next Air Max, but Lozano was supposed to lead it. Lozano had at this point been with Nike for four years, having worked with tennis, training, and ACG gear. Lozano also had Nike breathing down his neck with demands that they wanted this Air Max to recapture the energy that their running shoes used to have during the 70s and 80s. During this time, Nike's basketball division was making more noise and the Jordans were what people wanted, and this shoe was supposed to release in 1995. And you know, during this video I was wondering what kind of Jordan released in 19... Oh. Oh no. So yeah, I mean, looking back, it, I guess you can say that Lozano may have felt a bit pressured on this one. According to Lozano himself, the first months of brainstorming the next Air Max didn't go very well. Those months left the Air Max team disheartened and Lozano himself unsatisfied with what they were coming up with. Lozano needed something unique, something special that would get this project back on track. And that was when he remembered a sketch that he made well before he was picked to lead the Air Max team. According to Lozano, he created the first sketch of the Air Max 95 during a rainy day. Quote, I was looking across the lake out in the trees and I began picturing the process of rain eroding the earth and thought it would be interesting if the perfect product was unearthed by erosion. End quote. And with that mindset, he created a rough sketch of a shoe with stations that looked similar to the walls of the Grand Canyon. This sketch had been hidden away in a drawer, but Lozano thought that now was the perfect time to pick it back up. Lozano would however take his design one step further with the incorporation of the human anatomy into the design itself. According to Lozano, he always thought that the idea of a correlation between the human body and product design was fascinating. All these things ended up creating the Air Max 95 prototype and even though Lozano felt that he had created what the Nike XX were looking for, he was still facing an uphill battle. For starters, Nike took a problem with the lack of the swoosh. Lozano's initial design didn't have one because he argued that the implementation of more air and visible panels on the forefront and back end of the shoe and also the name was more than enough and it therefore didn't need a swoosh to cover up the side of the shoe. This would also, according to him, ruin the design of the Air Max 95. As this wasn't enough, Nike also had a problem with the colorway that Lozano had chosen for the Air Max 95, the iconic black, grey and neon colorway. Nike shoes had up until this point been predominantly white and this was mainly due to Nike who said that darker color shoes just didn't sell well. But Lozano disagreed and defended the color scheme by saying that it wasn't chosen at random. Lozano did acknowledge that most running shoes were white, however he didn't choose that color because he would constantly see how these nice white running shoes would quickly get dirty when out in the field, especially in Oregon on a rainy day. So he willingly chose the lower colors to be darker because that's where the dirt would usually appear and the other colors were also chosen specifically for the running purpose and was inspired by Nike's running kits that Lozano had worked on himself. It took a lot of convincing and a lot of negotiation back and forth but finally Lozano had done it. The Air Max 95 was ready and only with some smaller changes that differed from what he had initially envisioned like a little swoosh in the upper back part of the shoe. The Air Max 95 released in, well, 1995 and retail at $140, a rather steep price point but then again the Air Max have rarely been known for their affordability. When the shoe first came out it wasn't what you would call embraced by the community. I mean even Nike were a bit hesitant when it came to marketing the shoe. But the hype for the 95 slowly began building up with critics especially praising it for its innovative design and great performance reviews. Even Time Magazine at that time declared the Air Max 95 one of the year's finest athletic shoes. The shoe especially became popular with the hip hop community, and I think that we can all hear that the game Larry when thinking of this shoe. The Air Max 95 even managed to spark some controversy with a robbery in Japan involving the shoe, and even UK crime statistics that stated that most robbers were wearing 95s when doing their business. 
Either way, the Air Max 95 continues to be a popular silhouette to this day, and as Lozano's first try at an Air Max, I think that we can all agree that he did pretty well. Now let's move on to talk about the shoe itself. The Air Max 95 comes in a mesh textile leather and suede upper alongside visible air units on the forefront and heel of the shoe, with an iconic little Nike swoosh stitched at the back part of the upper. And to finish it all off you have that rubber outsole. Now when looking at the shoe you almost can but admire the design itself, and as I mentioned Lozano did not only take inspiration from the erosion of the earth, but also from the anatomy of the human body. The nylon eyelets that stick out on the side of the shoe make it look like it's from a human ribcage, and the lines that are also present are made to simulate veins and muscle tissue with the gradient changes of the colors which imitates color erosion. The midsole is also said to resemble a human spine that is even present on the heel part as well. A very interesting shoe to say the least and the colorways are even more so. Almost since it came out the 95 has always been a popular shoe and when you look at the releases that this shoe has had you begin to see why. Apart from having some great looking collaborations done with my personal favorite being the Carhartt pair, the 95 has had over 150 different colorways released with the original neon pair having been re-released over 10 times already. I'm more of a fan of the Solar Red colorway myself but the volts definitely come in at a strong second. Now let's move on to my opinion, what do I think of the Air Max 95s? Well when looking at how this shoe is still relevant today and looking at Nike's sheer determination of not wanting to stop releasing this shoe anytime soon, I think it's safe to say that it is a classic. But did it really come as a surprise though? I mean this shoe was one of the staples when talking about the Air Max series. You can't mention that sneaker legacy without involving the 95s and I also think it would be criminal if you didn't. And when you look back and see what Lozano was trying to create back then, not only having the weight of the Air Max legacy, but Nike's constant bickering and also order to create something as hype as the Jordan 11, and you've only been with the company for 4 years, I mean, you can clearly hear that this was back in the 90s because there is no way that Nike or any other company for that matter would dare to take such a risk. It's funny, but... It's also kind of sad when you think about it. I also have to be honest here and admit that I didn't really care much for the 95 when first creating this video. I don't know what it is, but it just doesn't really speak to me in the same way that an Air Max 1 or Jordan 1 does. But now, when I've looked more into it and how it came to be, and also looked at all those available colorways, I think I now need to go out and get myself a pair. But tell me, what do you think of the Air Max 95s? Are they your favorite or do you think they're overrated? Please leave your thoughts in a comment down below. That's all I have for you guys. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you want to see more. I'm Sneaker Clef and I'll see you in the next video.